I had a request to determine some absolute extreme values on a given interval, like the questions on page 257, number six. So I'm going to do three of them for you, and hopefully by the time I've done those three, you'll have a really good idea on how to do them. So if you're trying to find extreme values, remember this is calculus, you need to take the derivative. So the first thing we're going to do is take the derivative of this function. So y prime, the derivative of cos, remember anything that starts with the letter c goes to a negative derivative. So it's the negative sine of x and sine just goes to cos. So I have sine x, negative sine x plus cos x. So for critical values, make our statement, we're going to set y prime equal to zero. And if I set that equal to zero, that would mean that sine x has to be equal to cos x which is pretty difficult to solve for in this format. But if I divide both sides by the cos of x here, you can see that I could say, well, where is tan x equal to one? And you should know from all the work you did with um, special triangles, that that's a one, one square root two triangle where we get the tan and that's for pi over four. Okay, so 1, 1, square root 2, the tan of pi over 4 is 1 over 1. Okay, so I know that x has to be equal to pi over 4. Now I have to be careful to check the interval. So I want to know between 0 and 2 pi, where is tan x equal to 1? Or where do we get any multiples of pi over 4? So what I want to do is draw myself a cast diagram, C-A-S-T, and I'm going to put pi over 4 on here. That's right like this. So here's my pi over 4. And I want to know where else between 0 and 2 pi, so all the way around, is tan going to be equal to 1. And that would be the same over here. So I have to go into the quadrant where tan is positive. So remember when you're going around the circle, this is 8 pi over 4. I always tell my students to change these two pi's to the same denominator because it's much easier to figure out where you are. Okay, so I have 4 pi over 4 plus pi over 4, and then of course it's just 5 pi over 4. Okay, so now that I know two places where this would be um, have a critical value, so I have pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, I need to go back and check the original function, I need to check the endpoints, and I need to check each of these values to find which one is going to give me a maximum or a minimum on the interval. Okay, so I'm going to start with um, x equals 0, and I'm going to do a calculation here. So when x is 0, y is going to be the cos of 0 plus the sine of 0. So the cos of 0, as you know, it starts at 1, so that's 1, and sine of 0, not theta, sine of 0 is 0, so I get 1. Now I'm going to do the next one. Let's make a big table across like this. So now I'm going to do x is equal to pi over 4. So back into the original function, of course, because I'm trying to find the height of the function. Don't plug it back in here, you're going to get 0, right? So I plug in here, so I have the cos of pi over 4 plus the sine of pi over 4. Cos of pi over 4 is 1 over root 2, and so is the sine of pi over 4. So I get 2 over root 2, and if you rationalize the denominator, which you should do, you're going to get 2 root 2 over 2, which is just the root of 2. Okay. So now I move on to my next value, and that is 5 pi over 4. So you keep shifting down. You're going to do 4, your two values, plus your two endpoints. So now I'm going to say, well, y is equal to the cos of 5 pi over 4 plus the sine of pi over 4. Sorry, 5 pi over 4. And again, if I'm at 5 pi over 4, I'm in this quadrant, right? When I'm in this quadrant, 5 pi over 4, cos is negative, so this is the cos, the negative cos of pi over 4, and the sine in this quadrant is also negative, so the negative sine 
of pi over 4. These are the related acute angles with the appropriate sign. So I have minus 1 over root 2, minus 1 over root 2, and that's going to give me minus 2 over root 2 or minus the root of 2 following the same uh, procedure of rationalizing the denominator. You'll get this one. And then I go to the last one, which is x equals 2 pi. So y equals the cos of 2 pi plus the sine of 2 pi. And you know the cos of 2 pi. Let's make a quick little sketch of the cosine function just in case you forgot. Here's 2 pi. So 0 and 2 pi, we're at 1. So the cos of 2 pi is 1, and the sine of 2 pi is going to be 0. So I get 1, 1 plus 0. Now, determining the absolute value, so now I'm going to say, well, root 2 is bigger than 1, and minus root 2 is bigger than 1 again here. So I know that my solution is going to be um, an absolute um, maximum of root 2 when x equals pi over 4 and an absolute minimum of minus root 2 when x is equal to 5 pi over 4. Okay, so I'm going to do a couple more for you. You might want to stop and try one maybe now that uh, you have a better idea on how these are working. So I'm going to do b as well. It's y equals x plus 2 cos x plus 2 cos x. Okay, so you might want to stop, do it. Oh, and we need the domain here is x is between negative pi. Now you know why they give this domain, because as you know, trigonometric functions continue ad nauseum. So you have to make sure that you restrict the domain or else you'd have an infinite number of solutions. Okay, so now I'm going to take the derivative y prime, derivative of x is 1, and the derivative of 2 cos x. Cos, remember, that one goes negative, so minus 2 sine x. For critical values, we do the same thing, set y prime equal to 0. So if I set this equal to 0, I'm going to get... Um, 2 sine x equals 1, so sine x equals 1 half, and you should know that very well from all the trig you did in advanced functions. You know that means that x is going to be pi over 6. That's the related acute angle. I'm going to draw me, I'm going to draw me a little diagram. So I have pi over 6 here, and I'm going between negative pi and pi. Okay, so negative pi means going this way, and pi means going this way. So we really have 2 pi, but going in opposite directions, right? So if I drew that, um, if I drew a sine function, because that's where we got our solution from, I would be drawing like this. Here's my sine. So here's negative pi, and here's pi. So it gives you one full cycle. But where is this positive? So I want sine to be positive. So that means I have to be in this quadrant. So cos is negative, everything's positive, sine is positive, tan is positive. So that means my other angle will be to here. So that gives me pi over 6 for one and 5 pi over 6 for the other. Is this bringing back all the nightmares you had with your um, trig unit in advanced functions, perhaps so, right? Okay, so now we have to do the same thing we did in the previous question. We need to check negative pi, pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, and pi. Okay, so I'm going to do um, when x equals negative pi. So y equals negative pi plus 2 cos negative pi. So that gives me negative pi, and 2 cos of negative pi is going to be um, plus minus 2, or minus 2, and that's going to give me about minus 5.14. Then I do the next one. 
so you can see it's a little bit tedious but it's it's doable when x equals pi over 6 so that means y is going to be pi over 6 plus 2 times the cos of pi over 6 and pi over 6 if we um, make ourselves our nice little uh, triangle that's 2 1 square root 3 there's 30 degrees or pi over 6 here so the cos of pi over 6 adjacent over hypotenuse, that's going to give me pi over 6 plus 2 times root 3 over 2, which of course is just going to be root 3. Now you can plug this into your calculator, pi over 6 plus root 3, and you should get about 2.26. Okay, so now I have to do x equals 5 pi over 6. So now I have y equals 5 pi over 6 plus 2 times the cos of 5 pi over 6. So the cos of 5 pi over 6, that's going to put me in this quadrant. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Whoa, still not over this darn cold, sorry. Okay, so if I go here... So I had pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. C-A-S. Only sign is positive. So that means this is 5 pi over 6 minus 2 times the cos of pi over 6. And so that's going to give me 5 pi over 6 minus 2 times root 3 over 2, which again is minus root 3. And that should give you about 0.886. And finally, I have my x equals pi. And I mean, you could have done these in order, but it doesn't really matter. So I get y equals pi plus 2 times the cos of pi. What's the cos of pi? So if you do pi like this, um, the cos of pi, here's pi right here, right? It's negative 1. So if I do that, I have pi plus 2 times negative 1, and pi minus 2 is going to give you about 1.14. Okay, so now you look at all your numbers and you say, well, where's the biggest one? And that's right here. And where's the lowest value is here. So therefore, absolute minimum of minus 5.14 when x is equal to negative pi and an absolute maximum of, oh, not that one, this one here, right? Boop, 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 boop. That's a bigger number. 2.26 when x is equal to pi over 6. Okay, so I've got one more I'm going to do for you, and that's c. And then I'll let you try the other one on your own. I think you should be, be okay by then. So 6c says y equals sine x minus cos x. And the domain, always check the domain, and it's between, I give it in bracket notation for this one, so x has to be between 0 and 2 pi. Okay, so again, finding extrema, we need to find the derivative. So y prime, the derivative of sine x is cos x, and the derivative of negative cos x is going to be plus sine x. Remember that cos is the one that gives the negative sign, so negative negative sign gives plus. Okay, so now if I set this equal to 0, y prime equal to 0 for critical values, or extrema, whatever you want to say, and I'm going to get um, negative sine x is equal to cos x, and if I divide both sides by cos x, I would get negative tan x equals 1, or tan x equals negative 1. So where is tan x equal to negative 1? So again, we know it's going to be pi over 4, so I'm going to make my drawing, my cast rule. And I want to know where is tan negative. So I need to be in this quadrant and this quadrant. At 45 degrees like that so pi over 4 
this is our related acute angles here and here. So from here to here, remember this is 4 pi over 4. So this is going to be 3 pi over 4. And the other value, remember this here is going to be 8 pi over 4 minus pi over 4. So all the way around here is going to be 7 pi over 4. So that means x is equal to pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4. So now again, I have to do the whole checking part here. So I need to do 0, these two, and 2 pi. So when x is equal to 0, I have y is equal to sine 0 minus cos 0. What's the sine of 0? Sine of 0 is 0. The cos of 0, that was minus, right? Sine 0 minus cos of 0. Cos of 0 is 1. So that should give me minus 1. And then I'm going to do when x is equal to 3 pi over 4. So y is the sine. Maybe you're having trouble with these ones that aren't acute angles because that's kind of something you have to bring back into your memory from advanced functions, right? So the sine of 3 pi over 4, sine of 3 pi over 4, I'm in this quadrant, that's the same as the sine of pi over 4. But the cos of 3 pi over 4 is going to be negative. So it's going to be negative, negative cos of pi over 4, which of course is plus. The sine of pi over 4 is 1 over root 2, and plus the cos of pi over 4 is 1 over root 2. And if you rationalize the denominator and do all that stuff again like we've already done, you're going to get the root of 2. Okay, now I'm going to do x is equal to 7 pi over 4. So y equals the sine of 7 pi over 4. And I start thinking about what the related acute angles are for 7 pi over 4. So the sine of 7 pi over 4, I'm in this quadrant, that's going to be the negative sine of pi over 4. And the cos minus the cos of 7 pi over 4 is just going to be minus the cos of pi over 4 because cos is already positive in this quadrant. So I have 1 over root 2 minus 1 over root 2 minus 1 more over root 2. That's minus 2 over root 2, same as here. So I'm going to get the negative of root of 2. And finally, boom, x is equal to 2 pi. Okay, so I have y equals sine 2 pi minus cos 2 pi. What's the sine of 2 pi? 0. What's the cos of 2 pi? 1. So I have minus 1. That's minus 1. Okay, so sine of, yeah, that's all right. Cos, cos of 2 pi is 1, 0 minus 1. I think for some reason the textbook gave a plus 1 there, but I know I'm right. Okay, so these are the max and minimums. They're bigger than the square root of 1. So an absolute max of root 2 when x equals 3 pi over 4 and an absolute minimum of minus root 2 when x equals 7 pi over 4. Okay, so that's um, that's what you have to do with these ones. I know it, it, it looks like it looks like a lot of work and it is a lot of work. But I think you can handle it and I think you're quite capable of just following. Once you've seen how it's done, I'm sure you'll understand now. Okay, hope that helped you out. Thanks for asking. It was a very good question.